we're looking here at Roger van der Weyden's deposition dated to 1435. It's a very large painting. It is about seven feet tall and eight and a half feet wide, uh, representing Christ being removed from the cross. Right, that's what deposition means, right? Exactly. De means being deposed or removed from the cross. And they're about to place him in his mother's lap, the Virgin Mary, who's fainted. Uh, from grief at the crucifixion. So this is one of those standard moments when artists represent the life of Christ. Right. Yep. And so after this might be the lamentation and then mm -hmm. the entombment exactly. and the resurrection. The resurrection that follows. Right. Yeah. Um, and in a way we could talk about this image as a typical Flemish painting from the early to mid 1400s. Yeah, it looks very obviously Northern Renaissance to me. It's got that yeah, those heavy, very heavy, complicated, angular folds of drapery that we see on Mary and some, also the figures at the far ends. The, the, the paper-like angular folds, yeah. the rather elongated figures that are crammed into a small space. Uh, those figures are about life-size. Um, and also the, that gold embroidery on the mm -hmm. figure just to the right of Christ, you know, mm -hmm. the way that there's that interest in the light shining on that metallic exactly. embroidery the, is the, very northern the Renaissance. The rendering of texture, especially as yeah. it's um, His fur affected collar. by light. The fur collar, the faces, the hair, the fabric, right. um, everything has this meticulous, almost microscopic attention to detail and texture that's yeah. typical of a northern painter. Yeah, even those plants down mm -hmm. at the bottom have right. been so carefully observed. Yeah. Um, but also, you, this would not be mistaken for anyone but uh, van der Weyden, because even though those are all general characteristics of Flemish art from the period, there are some things that he does that are quite different from other contemporaries. Right, we, we don't see that deep space that we see, for example, in Van Eyck in the Ghent altarpiece. Exactly. Uh, van der Weyden's compositions are usually confined to a very, very shallow space that really pushes the figures right up against the front of the picture plane, which really enhances the the dramatic quality. Yeah, and the emotional quality. The emotional quality. quality. And then, of course, that goes hand in hand with the very emotional behavior of the people in his yes. paintings. Oftentimes, the Flemish painters painted people who looked... Uh, not so emotional, but van der Weyden instead gives them great emotional intensity. Mm -hmm. Like we see in this figure of one of the Marys who is uh, crying, her nose is red, uh, there are tears coming yeah, down real her cheek. Tears. Here you can really talk about the attention to the effects of light as the light reflects also off of, but also refracts through the tears, the tears that are flowing down her cheek. Uh, someone and once brought to my attention the tear that's at the very corner of her mouth, and as you're looking at that, it almost looks like it's about to go into her mouth. And as you're looking at it, it's almost as if you can taste right, what a tear right, tastes like. Right. You so want to really, sort of put your tongue over there to catch exactly. it. Exactly. It really helps you to, to empathize, empathize and right. makes you feel like you're there in front of these Which people. Which was the idea. Exactly. Right? As a devotional I mean, And tool. look at that tiny little pin holding yep. her headdress. And I also never noticed that before. The way you can still see all the creases that have been yep. ironed into yep. the white Why fabric. Why do they, they love to do that, those creases mm -hmm. in the fabric? It's yeah. fabulous. Absolutely. Uh, so all of these things things um, help differentiate it in a way. And then speaking about this particular image, um, there's a few things worth noting. Uh, as we said, Christ is being lowered from the cross. He's headed down towards his mother's lap. And what's interesting is the way that van der Weyden has essentially echoed their poses. The position that Christ is in is very much like the one that Mary is in. Right. And there's a, it creates a kind of wave-like downward and leftward movement through the composition that underlines the direction of his body in this narrative. And eventually into lowered into even into the tomb. And into the tomb itself. Um, also, they're linked in their posture. Mm -hmm. Their arms because, hanging down. Because that helps link them in terms of who they are. This right. is mother and son. They share a relationship with each other that is not shared with anyone else in the painting and therefore their similar poses establish that yeah. link. And I think we're supposed to empathize here with with Mary too right. and yeah. what this moment must have been like for her. As we see she's extremely pale not only because she's pure and virginal but here also because she's fainted. Right. Um, and I think there's a connection there too because Mary has fainted, but she will, like other people who faint, soon regain consciousness and mm -hmm. wake up again. And I think we need to understand a connection to Christ in this painting, too, because although he's dead, having died on the cross, he's according really to dead, traditional right? Christian teaching, three days later he will be resurrected from the grave. And right. so I think there's an important link between her having fainted and his having died. Right. So maybe we're kind of being reminded, in a way, of the resurrection. Mm -hmm. It's for, uh, foreshadowing that, absolutely. Right. And, you know, something that I always 
that I always think about is that skull down there, which one is tempted to think of as a memento mori, as a reminder of death, but actually is part of another traditional Christian teaching. It, it could be to remind you of death, but it, it's... Its more literal meaning is that there was a belief that Christ was crucified on the spot where Adam, from Adam and Eve, was buried. And so frequently you see a skull and bones at the foot of the cross that are supposed to be representing Adam. Um, And just as Adam was the old man of the Old Testament, Christ is in a way the new Adam, uh, the birth and the presence of the new man under the Christian law of the New Testament. Right, so... so Adam having caused, Adam and Eve having caused the fall of mankind into sin and Christ and Mary redeeming mankind from that original sin. Right. It's a beautiful painting. One other thing we can talk about briefly is the way that van der Weyden arranges his composition. We talked about the positioning of Christ and Mary, Mm -hmm. but I'd also call your attention to the fact that there are four people on the left, but only three people on the right. And You might expect that that would throw the composition off kilter and make it seem off balance. balance. But what he's done is, you'll notice the figures on the right, where there's only three people, have much more elaborate clothing with fancy Mm -hmm. brocade. Or Mary Magdalene on the far right is in a robe or in clothing with three or four different colors. Whereas everyone on the left is in plain, solid clothing with no patterns, very few colors used. Mm -hmm. And that helps simplify that side, compensating for the additional figures over there. So that they sort of seem more balanced visually. Right. I also always noticed how the figures on either end are kind of curled inward Mm -hmm. to sort of focus our attention to the center on Christ and almost like brackets that enclose the image. Right, exactly. Cool.